Now I have two rules when it comes to painting my Infinity miniatures. The first is I try my best to just take my time with them and make them look as beautiful as I can. The second is that I try to treat each model as an individual, so I generally, as a rule, will never batch paint them. And even if I've bent those rules a little now and again, maybe batch paint in here or there, or speed paint in here or there, overall, they've served me pretty well to get me a nice little collection of lovely miniatures. The problem is, I don't own either my O12 or Ariadna armies anymore. They date back to when I was a Code 1 player, and now that I play N4, I just prefer the playstyle of other armies. But you see, because of my self-imposed rules, it's taken me a painfully long time to get my current armies, being Morats and JSA, painted up to a nice standard around my commission commitments and the stuff I paint on YouTube. This needs to change. It really does. So when Corvus Belly very kindly sent me the new Backing in Observance action pack, I knew it was time to break all the rules. I'm gonna utilize all the tricks of the trade here to get this action pack painted out as fast as I can, but still trying to make it look as nice as I can. I'll leverage every tool I own, such as using my 3D printer to make these base toppers. And I'm gonna be taking you along with me to see how fast we can get these stunning nine new models painted without sacrificing too much quality. First up is the black, and I don't want to work all of that up by hand because black fabric is kind of supposed to look pretty smooth. It's going to be a lot harder to leverage texture and scratchiness to speed me up. So I decided I was going to block these parts in just with my airbrush. I can always come back to them later for a little reinforcement if it's needed. But for now, this felt like a smart way to start. I tackle this airbrushing stage in batches, already breaking one of my rules and getting this video off to a fine start. For the reds, I'm still going to use my typical workup method, but instead of a workup that's maybe five or six stages of colour, I'm going to reduce my workup to just three paints. All of these paints come straight from the bottle, and again, I'm going to tackle the models in batches. Now, I will revisit the reds towards the end, that said, for just a little tickle of, you know, edge highlighting and tidying up. The specific bottles I'm using for my reds might come as a surprise though. Duncan's Two Thin Coats paint range is absolutely satin, and you may write that off for your Infinity Minis, but I varnish mine, so the finish out of the bowl doesn't really matter. What these paints have going for them though is that they cover well, they blend beautifully, and they're really easy to use they get a big thumbs up from me. Another one of the dominant colors in the observance models is white. And again, I go for a method here that you probably would think of as a bit more warhammery, but it will work for a speed paint and it will still look nice. After painting the surfaces with Viejo light gray, I've washed them down with the new formula Nuln Oil. Since this paint produces much lighter shadows than the old formula and stains the surface less, it's kind of perfect here. Once it's dry, I can highlight back up to light grey and then to near white for some whites that look pretty decent, actually, for how quick they are. At this stage in proceedings, I need to start getting some more refined work in so that my three main colours have some nice pop and separation to them, and I have a clearer idea of how the scheme is progressing. So there's really no surprises here. The reds see a pale, skin tony kind of highlight, the blacks get some greys, and the whites get some white. This is, however, the slowest section of the work so far, where it's starting to not really feel like a speed paint. That said, I have faith that this is gonna be an area where it's worth spending a little speed to buy a little quality. And really, that's a great way to look at painting in general. Speed and quality are often just tradable commodities. You don't have to pick one or the other. You can balance back and forth between them on different parts of the mini to get something that overall is quick, but still looks great. Now once that's all done, I'm progressing on to skin tones, and again, I'm not going to be pulling out any special tricks or magic here, because I believe skin tones are something that deserve just a bit of time and effort. So I'll just use reliable workup recipes that I'm familiar with, that I understand, and they'll maximise the output I get for the effort I put in. I have plenty of videos where I show the recipes and techniques here, so I won't detail them today, but I will say, do be sure to use a variety of skin tones when you paint your miniatures. 
Not only is it a better representation of reality when people aren't all portrayed with one skin color, but it'll also provide you with much better practice and experience as a painter, and that can only be a good thing. It's now time to move on to some of the trinkets and smaller details on the models, the little bits and bobs that are small enough to not really warrant a full section each of their own, stuff like buckles, small adornments, strapping. Those kind of things would typically fall into this category. I don't really use my brain during this part of the painting, kind of just drift into autopilot and jam away, dotting in little bits of colours I think either look cool or just make sense. It's nice sometimes to have a section like this in your work, especially after a lot of hard work, where you can just let go, have a bit of fun, not worry too much about specifics. By choosing the smallest, least noticeable parts for this, you minimise the risk of cocking up something that drags the whole paint job down. It's a win-win. And finally, we're nearing the end, so I can bust out some freehand and some other little finishing touches. It's during these finishing touches that I most encourage you to just get creative and start putting your ideas onto the mini. I like to freehand little details on my Infinity Minis because it creates a bit of personality. And for the observance, there's not really any shortage of ideas to work from. Another great way that you can show personality though is with weapons. Infinity, after all, is a cyberpunk near future game. So your models can absolutely rock those DLC skins if they want to. Weapons don't have to just be metal and basic plastic. Advanced polymers and space age materials all exist in abundance in this setting, so you can really just kind of do what you like. One thing I think looks really cool with Infinity Minis is little fades on the end of the guns. I like to imagine that the gun might be made of some advanced material that can shift colour to suit the battlefield or even just the user's taste. The fade is a way that you can capture that happening in mid-shift. Another really fun thing with the Observance models is that they have a lot of swords. I love painting swords and in the case of these ones I think I actually want to keep the swords pretty kind of normal. Steely colours for blades, goldy colours for the rest, and again, I just slow down a little bit for this. We've got a lot of fast work in the models, we can afford a bit of slow work. Some simple NMM, which is, you know, not as slow as a fully refined NMM, but should still look really good. And then other than that, a bit of basing, a few glowy bits here and there, that was it. I was done. So the real question is, how did I do? Do they look nice? Were they fast? Well, we're about to find out, but before I drop that, I'm gonna hold you hostage for just a second to ask you to drop this video a little like if you've enjoyed it so far. If you really wanna help out too, you could also subscribe to the channel and enable notifications. Those things are gonna tell YouTube that this is a good video worth watching, and that means they're gonna show it to more people, which will help me massively. That said, if you do want to go a step further, I do have a Ko-fi and a Patreon. There are links to those below in the description, where from as little as one pound a month, that's about 170 US dollars, roughly, and about 110 euros, you can get all sorts of cool benefits. But most of all, you can join me on Discord, where I'm available to answer your questions, just chat and hang out, and even play games occasionally online with Tabletop Simulator. All of that is linked below, so please do check it out, and that would really, really help. Thanks a lot. Anyway, plugging aside, how are the observants looking? How did we do? Was it fast? Let's answer those questions. And well, I'm actually happy, honestly. There's definitely things I could do better here if I was willing to spend more time on them. But you have to consider, I normally tackle my Infinity models one at a time at a rate of sort of somewhere between six to eight hours per mini on average. So getting this whole action pack done in 32 hours, yes, it took 32 hours, actually feels great. That's about three and a half hours a model, pretty much double time. What's even better is that in a couple more models time, I'll have a fully playable force ready to rock. And well, that's really what this mission was about. So I would like to send a huge thanks to Corvus Belly for sending over the Observance action pack and all the other goodies that they did. And just to remind you, if you wanted an incentive to subscribe, there is also more Observance content coming in the future. So if you particularly like this faction as much as I do, make sure you're subscribed and hopefully YouTube will tell you when I post that content. However, for now, that's me done. I'm off to enjoy my new army. I'm gonna go and put them on my display shelves and make them look all pretty. So. Thank you so much for watching, folks. I will see you in the next one. And bye-bye for now.